All burn surgeons worldwide face the same problems in treating severe burn wounds, such as limited donor sites and difficulty in handling widely meshed skin grafts, especially when expansion ratios of 1 to 3 and higher are required. The expansion ratios of these mesh grafts are not as realistic because 25% to 40% is lost during meshing and handling. We are proud to be the exclusive supplier of the modified Meek technique, the solution to all of these problems. In the following sequences, we will present the surgical instruction procedure of this modified Meek technique. Here, the blade's axis is put down on the Meek machine. The bridge is placed over it and tightly secured. The unsterile motor should be encapsulated in the sterile housing by using the sterile funnel and using the black lines as guidelines. After sliding the motor into the housing, it's placed on the machine and secured with a clamp. The hose of the air supply is connected to the connector of the motor by means of a quick coupling. Required air pressure is 4 to 8 bar. Air supply is controlled by pressing the foot pedal completely down. Estimate the amount of skin you need to harvest. Please use the sheet Number of Meek Gauzes Required Per Percentage TBSA as a guide to indicate the amount of gauzes you need and therefore the amount of skin you need to harvest. A split thickness skin graft between 0.2 and 0.3 mm is often used for harvesting. It is recommended that the D42 is used, as its dimensions are specifically designed for the Meek technique. It is very important not to use oil or any other fatty substances during preparation of the donor site on the ward and during graft harvesting, because the oil prevents the glue from sticking the graft to the gauze. Make sure the cork plate is wet, but prevent the prefolded gauze from getting wet. Spread the graft completely on a sterile surface. The epidermal side of the graft is placed down on this surface and place the cork plate on the dermal side of the graft. Cut the graft to the exact size of the cork plate. After cutting, gently turn over the cork plates so the skin is in place and flat. An alternative could be to place the graft dermal side down directly on the cork plate. If needed, trim the graft to the exact size of the cork plate. Otherwise, excess skin will not be part of the cutting process, and therefore there is a lack of skin islands in this specific row. Always make sure that the dermal side is against the cork, so that you will end up placing the skin islands dermal side down on the wound bed. Place the cork plate on the dermal side of the skin. Then, turn the cork plate over with the epidermal side on top. After cutting it twice, spray the epidermal side with glue. Then, place the cork plate on the prefolded gauze, taking care that it has lined up exactly on the central square of the gauze. After removing the cork plate and expansion, place the gauze with the dermal side of the skin on the wound bed. Leftover pieces of skin can also be used, therefore no skin is wasted. This is especially advantageous in case of extensive burns, where donor sites are scarce. Open the double block, and then place the skin into the cutting block, and moisten the inside of the cover. Ensure that the cutting block is placed on the meek machine at the side of the hand wheel. For correct positioning, use the arrow indicator on the double block. Activate the motor of the motor-driven Meek by pressing the foot pedal completely down. Simultaneously, rotate the hand wheel to move the cutting block under the bridge. Place the supported wedge on the double block and open the screws. Push it downwards while slightly lifting the cover. The graft will come loose from the cover and open the cover. Make sure that each cork holder is rotated 90 degrees after the first cut and pass through the machine again. Moisten the inside of the cover of the double block in between the cuttings. Always place a second cork plate in the other cork holder 
to facilitate optimal cutting of the graft. Check if the cut has been done twice by bending the cork plate gently. By cutting the cork plate twice, 196 individual skin islands have been created. Place the cork plates with the skin on a flat sterile surface that is covered with a sterile drape. Put the cork plates a certain distance from each other. Set the cork plates away from other items to prevent them getting sprayed as well. Spray the epidermal skin evenly with adhesive from a distance of 20 to 25 centimeters. Be careful that the force of the spray doesn't cause them to fly off the edge of the table. Be careful not to spray too much and allow adequate drying time of at least six minutes, but always wait until the surface changes from glossy to dull. Set a timer and make someone responsible for monitoring the time. After the required drying period, transfer the skin islands from the cork plate to the center of the sterile pre-folded gauze. Make sure the cork is placed in the center of the gauze. Press firmly with your thumbs. Leave the cork plates in place until the moment of transplantation. Always start at the zigzag side for the first expansion. Stretch completely. Then the second expansion on the plain side is to be done. Stretch this completely as well. Remove the aluminium foil starting from one of the corners. A maximum of 196 skin islands is expanded in a controlled and fixed way. After the usual wound bed preparation, the gauzes are placed onto the wound bed and secured with staples, making sure that there is good, even contact. Apply the gauze graft side down to the wound bed. Stretch the gauze working corner to corner and flatten it to ensure optimal contact between the skin graft and the wound bed. Secure with staples and fold back the edges of the gauze. Gauzes should be placed close to each other and aligned to prevent additional scarring in between each one. The permeable nylon gauze also acts as a carrier for the graft and also helps protect from shear. Gauzes can also be trimmed to fit difficult areas. The graft islands adhere very well to the gauzes and handling them is very easy. This is in contrast to the trouble in the handling of some widely expanded mesh grafts. All graft islands are correctly orientated to the wound bed in a regular pattern. The distances between the islands are relatively small as they are showing fast epithelialization rates. Local therapy after the meek technique is normally no different from the therapy used when applying mesh grafts. In order to have the graft take well, the wound bed is kept moist with suitable outer dressings after transplantation. These outer dressings should not be changed for the first 48 hours. After this period, these outer dressings may be changed daily, but leave the meek gauzes in place. The meek gauzes should remain in situ for 6 to 14 days. To facilitate removal, 1% silver sulfadiazine cream, also known as SSD cream, may be put on the gauzes one day prior to removal. Remove the staples and gently peel off the gauze fabric, leaving the graft islands in situ on the wound bed. It is no problem if removal is delayed after day 6 as epithelialization continues. The Meek method is a practical and reliable technique for obtaining widely expanded autografts, especially in case of extensive burns. It is considered the most efficient method for dealing with the patient's skin.